Why droops, my lord, like overripened corn hanging the head at Ceres' plenteous load? Why thine eyes fix to the sullen earth, gazing on that which seems to dim thy sight? What seest thou there? King Henry's diadem, and chased with all the honors of the world? If so, gaze on and grovel on thy face until thy head be circled with the same. Put forth thy hand, reach at the glorious gold. Ah, oh, Nell, sweet Nell, if thou dost love thy lord, banish the canker of ambitious thoughts. My troublous dream this night hath made me sad. What dream, my lord? Tell me, and I'll requite it with sweet rehearsal of my morning's dream. Methought the staff of mine was broke in twain, and as I think, it was by the cardinal. And on the pieces of the broken wand were placed the heads of Winchester and Suffolk. This was my dream. What it hath bowed, God knows. What? This was nothing but an argument. That he that pricks a stick of Gloucester's Grove shall lose his head for his presumption. <laughs> I dreamed last night I sat in majesty in the cathedral church of Westminster, where Henry and Dame Margaret kneeled to me, and on my head did sit the diadem. May Eleanor, then I must chide outright. Presumptuous dame, ill-nurtured Eleanor. Art thou not second woman in the land, and the protector's wife, beloved of him? And will thou still be hammering treachery to tumble down thy husband and thyself? Away from me, and let me hear no more. What, what, my lord? Are you so choleric with Eleanor for telling but her dream? Next time, I'll keep my dreams unto myself and not be checked. No, be not angry, it is not no. I shall tumble down my husband, but all the peers that hate thee and conspire to line such bushes as may bait thy wings. I fear they'll tangle thee, fly how thou canst. Say, yeah, then, for bear thou must all awry. I must offend before I be attainted. Why, they cannot procure me any scathe so long as I am loyal, true, and crimeless. My lord protector. Hmm? It is his highness' pleasure that when the council's business is concluded, you do prepare to ride unto St. Albans, whereas the king and queen do mean to hawk. I go. Come, Eleanor. Will you ride with me? Yes, my good lord, I'll follow. Presently. Follow. I must. I cannot go before while Gloucester bears this base and humble mind. Were I a man, a duke, and next of blood, I would remove these tedious stumbling blocks and smooth my way upon their headless necks. Yet, being a woman, I will not be slack to play my part in fortune's pageant. Where are you there, Sir John? Nay, fear not, man. We are alone. We have none but thee and me. Jesus, preserve your royal majesty. What sayest thou, man? Hast thou as yet conferred with Marjorie Jordan, the cunning witch, and Roger Bolingbroke, the conjurer? This I have promised, sir, to show your highness a spirit raised from depth of underground that shall give answer to such questions as by your grace shall be propounded him. Thanks, good Sir John. Tonight will fit our time. Till when, drink that for my sake, and so farewell. You must make merry with the Duchess Gold. <laughs> Marianne shall. What? Gold to bring a witch. Gold cannot come amiss where she a devil. Yet have I gold flies for another coast. For Suffolk and the cunning cardinal, knowing Dame Eleanor's aspiring humor, have hired me to undermine the Duchess and buzz these conjurations in her brain. Well, so it stands. Methinks these naughty times do breed a kind of honesty in knaves. I that betray her grace betray a traitor. Yet I yield her to a pair of traitors whose gold's more treacherous than the other's guilt. And yet again, these lofty traitors tell me they do their treasons on the king's behalf. They swear it is so. Should I suspect their oaths, I dare not do it. But I that serve the crown, and am well served with crowns for my good service. And let this business go what way it will. What an her wreck should prove Duke Humphrey's fall, what an she speed. I shall have gold for all. If it doth not displease thee, tis our will. Since she is partnered in our cares and comforts, her loving presence shall content me much. 
That which my sovereign wills, it's lost its pleasure. Pray keep that seat, good madam, that welcome. Please, your grace, we may appoint a regent in your name to rule in France who may maintain the peace we have established. Who must we name? So please, my gracious lord, uh, methinks the Duke of York is fittest man. And I say Somerset is either fit. What says your majesty? What is Henry's choice? For my part, noble lords, I care not which of Somerset or York calls one to me. If York have ill demeaned himself in France, then let him be denied the regentship. If Somerset be unworthy of the place, let York be regent. I will yield to him. What canst thou say, my lord of Suffolk? Why Somerset should be preferred in this place? Because the king, forsooth, will have it so. Madam, the king is old enough himself to give his censure. These are no woman's matters. If he be old enough, what needs your grace to be protector of his excellence? If the king bids me, I resign my place. Resign it then and leave thine insolence. Well, to the matter that we have in hand. By my advice, York is the meetest man. But before we make a lecture, give me leave to show some reasons of no little force why York is most unmeet of any man. I'll tell thee, Suffolk, why I am unmeet. First, for I cannot flatter thee in pride. Next, if I be appointed for the place, my Lord of Somerset will keep me here. Without discharge, money or furniture, while France is yielded into Frenchman's hands. Peace, Hedgehog. Why shall I hold my peace? Come, leave these jars and let the king resolve who is most meet to rule for him in France. Now, Uncle, thou art Lord Protector yet. What thou thinks best to that will I consent? Well, then, my lords, accept Duke Humphrey's doom. Let Somerset be ruler of the French. Yet uh, do not think, because I make this choice, I do not honor you, my Lord of York. When thou art uh, right her in experience, I dare be sworn that no man in the realm is like to prove more fit for high employment. I am content to yield unto your choice, and question not your great opinion. This likes me well, my lords, we are agreed. Madam, what sayst thou to these gentle means, by which our loving counsel doth determine what tendeth best unto our kingdom's good? And did I wonder at it, sir, and trust me, I never saw the like of it in France. What more remains, my lord? May we have done. Then. Those of you who may, attend on us. This night we mean to ride into St. Albans. My Lord of Somerset, God speed you hence. And if you prosper hence one half so well as we do hope to prosper here in England, our realm of France shall bless thy regentship. Farewell, all joy unto your majesty. My Lord of Suffolk, say, is this the government of Whitton's Isle? Must my Henry be a pupil still, under the surly Gloucester's governance? Am I a queen in title and in style, and must be made the subject to a duke? Mm. I tell thee, Poe, when in the city tour, thou ramst a tilt in honor of my love, and stolst away the ladies' hearts of France. I thought King Henry had resembled thee in courage, courtship, and proportion. But all his mind is bent to holiness. His study is his tilt yard, and his soldiers but brazen images of canonized saints. As for his love, I swear it is Our Lady and never Margaret. What think you, sir? He numbers are they Marys on his beads? Before my face, I am the bedchamber. I would the college of the cardinals would choose him pope and carry him to Rome and set the triple crown upon his head. That were a state fit for his holiness. Madam, be patient. As I was the cause your highness came to England, so will I in England work your highness chief contern. Besides the haughty protector, have we both for the imperious churchman, Warwick, Somerset and grumbling York. <laughs> and not the least of these but can do more in England than the king. Yet none of these do vex me half as much as that proud dame, the Lord Protector's wife. She sweeps it through the court with troops of ladies more like an empress than Duke Humphrey's wife. That strangers to the court suppose her queen. How shall I live to be revenged on her? Contemptuous base-born callous as she is? Madam, myself have lined the bush for her. 
<laughs> and placed a choir of such enticing birds that she will like to listen to their lays and never mouth to trouble you again. Ah. So let her rest. And, madam, this to me. Mm -hmm. Although mm -hmm. we fancy not the cardinal, yet let us join with him and with the lords till we have brought Duke Humphrey in disgrace. <laughs> Attend the king. Go lightly to St. Albans, while I do work to undermine the duke by means which are already broached in London. Then, one by one, We'll weed them all at mm -hmm. last, and you yourself shall steer the happy realm.